this movie I want to show how to work with the Quick Selection tool in conjunction with the Refine Edge Refine Mask that's been improved in Photoshop CS5 to tackle tricky jobs like this where you can see a photograph of my daughter Angelica that's been photographed against the busy background. And here I want to show how to create a cutout mask of Angelica and then place her against a different type of image. Now normally this would be quite difficult to achieve in Photoshop on its own and people have relied on using third-party plugins which, although still useful, I think the interesting thing here is that for the first time Photoshop has now provided the tools for you to be able to do this all entirely within Photoshop itself. So to show you the steps that would be used, first of all I have the quick selection tool selected over here and I'm just going to drag the tool around here, around the outline just to add to the selection to get started. And as is often the case when you make a selection using the Quick Selection tool, you don't get everything right straight away. So if I hold the Option key down on the Mac or the Alt key on the PC, I can just subtract from that selection just to tidy up the area around here, around the sleeve. And then also over here around the hair. And at that stage, let me just do a little bit more of there. At this stage, I think that probably it's fair to assume that I think that I've probably got most of, it, most of everything selected. It's good enough as an initial selection. So I'm going to go up here now to the Select menu and choose Inverse. And over here in the Layers uh, panel, first of all, I need to double-click the background layer to convert it into an ordinary layer. And down at the bottom, there is the Add Layer Mask button. If I click on that, this will add a layer mask to the layer. Now it's important to point out here that it hasn't actually deleted anything so far. So if I show you what I mean, if I hold down the shift key and click on the layer mask thumbnail, you can see that the entire layer contents are still there. It's just the layer mask itself is acting as a mask to hide <coughs> and reveal particular areas of the image so that where you see the transparency here, this is where the mask is actually hiding the layer contents. Now I'm going to change uh, things slightly from the way I showed these steps in the book. Uh, let me go to the bridge in the background and open up this uh, other image here. I'm going to drag this image in now rather than at the end. So let me just hold down the shift key as I do that to center it on the other image and I can just easily now drag it down to the bottom so that I place it underneath. Having done that I can then close that image down. I don't need to have it open anymore. Let's just switch to the full screen mode. So looking at the image as it is at the moment, I think the first thing I need to do is to make this uh, background layer that I've now got look more blurred. So if I go to the filter menu and choose from the blur submenu box blur, this is a convenient filter for um, creating a quick sort of lens blur type of effect. So I'll apply a 20 pixel radius there and I think that will do fine. Now <clears throat> if we go back to the main layer, you can see at the moment that as things stand, just using the quick selection, it's not really that satisfactory um, a mask at the moment. If I just go to the full screen view, it's not too bad actually around the sleeves there, but obviously around here things aren't looking really quite, you know, quite right. It's not in any way a decent hair mask uh, selection. But that doesn't matter for now because Refine Edge is going to be able to take care of that. So the important thing to do here is to make sure that I have the right element selected, which is the layer mask rather than the layer itself. And you can tell when it's active because of the dotted outline around here. And then if I go to the Select menu, I can choose Refine Mask. Now, I refer to this in the book as Refine Mask, Refine Edge because the two terms are interchangeable. And it does get a little bit confusing sometimes. but just remember that both terms mean exactly the same thing. But in this case, it's called Refine Mask because we're using it to refine the edges in the mask that's uh, been selected and made active. So let's now go through the controls that we have here, starting with the view mode at the top. Here we've got different um, view options. At the moment, I have it set to the On Layers view, whereas the default view that you'll see when you select this is to the On White but it's easy enough to change this and to click the Remember Settings button at the bottom so that you use that instead. And I find On Layers is more useful because especially in a situation like this where I'm previewing what I'm doing against the final background layer, um, it's more useful to see the um, editing of the layer 
as it is with the transparency active rather than against the plain white background. So I'll leave that setting as it is at the moment. <clears throat> then coming down here to the edge detection section, we have a radius slider. And the radius slider is used to modify the, uh, the, the way that the uh, refine mask calculates its stuff against the, uh, the mask edge. So what you need to know here is, is that if you want to modify the mask, you can start doing this by increasing the value here for the radius. And if you were editing a mask edge that contained a lot of fine details, then you would want to use a narrow radius, you know, like for example, you know, wire against a, a, a background. You know, if you wanted to just isolate the fine edges of some barbed wire or something like that, you would want to use a small radius. And then in the case of uh, fine hair, over which is uh, representing a rather a broader area that you wish to blend with the background, for broad areas you need to increase the radius upwards and you can do this by increasing the slider and that will produce a different result. You can see the net effect that that has here, but it's not so good for dealing with the, uh, the uh, narrow edges around here in this portion of the photo. So the solution is to try and sort of choose you know, a, a more sort of conservative setting to start off with. So I'm going to go for a setting of around about sort of 19, 20 pixels around there and then click on the smart radius option at the top and watch what happens to the way that this image of Angelica uh, transitions with the background image behind. If I click on the smart radius, you'll see a small change take place there. It's quite subtle at the moment looking at this, but I'll undo it again. And that's the before and that's the after. Um, still not perfectly right just yet, but uh, we'll, we'll come on to now the various ways that you can use the controls below in the adjust edge section, as well as this tool up here to improve the appearance of the mask. So first of all, starting off with the smooth slider, this can be used to smooth out the edge. Um, in a situation like this, I wouldn't want to go too high, so I'm going to keep that down to around three. The feather control is important because in order to achieve a true realistic uh, photographic looking edge when you're merging an image with another, you want to use a feathered edge. You know, you want to keep the edges soft. You can go quite high here with a feather slider, but it becomes kind of um, rather too much if you take it too high. So I'm not going to go to extremes. I mean, that's a very, very sort of soft edge that we've got there, but I'll take it back down to around about 1.3 or 1.4 around there, that would be fine. And then I'm just going to use the contrast slider now just to make that a little bit harder on the edge. And then we come down to the shift edge, which is also really important because the shift edge can be used in this case here to either to expand the mask so that you make it larger or you can constrain the mask by making it smaller so that you can shrink it. And in this instance, I found that probably setting around about minus 9, 10, 11, around there, that's probably about the right amount to apply. And it's still not quite right yet because you can still, you can still tell that it's a cutout. It's not, looking, um, it's not looking that perfect just yet. So uh, let's just go and zoom in a little bit more on the image just to go and see what's going on around this area here. And you can see some of the problem there. It's still looking like a cutout mask. So this is where the... Um, this tool comes in here. You can use this to refine the edge further by painting around the edge of the mask. And you can see that as you do this, as I paint around it, you can see it starts to reveal some of the original image. And then I release, and then it's finished doing its work. It's done a good job. It's, it's applied its job of trying to refine the edge appearance. Um, you can work on it in transparency mode, but of course the problem is you don't actually know, in this case, where the hairs are that you're trying to reveal. So I find that if we go down to the reveal layer mode at the bottom, then it's easy because now you can actually see exactly what it is you're trying to include. So if I um, just make the brush a little bit, let me just try and, whoops, let me just try and make the brush a little bit smaller there and just try and follow around some of those hairs and just try painting over them. I just need to keep doing this around all of the hair outline. And you notice after each time I release the mouse that the calculation takes place and then we start afresh painting in again. I need to come up around here as well. And what I'm doing with this brush is really telling the 
refine mask command which areas it needs to concentrate on. And as I explained just now, it's easier to see what you're doing when you work in the reveal or layers mode to actually target this exactly right. And I'll just come around here and finish off that last little bit. That's looking fine. If I wanted to, let me just go back to the, um, <clears throat> the on layers view. Let's just go and see how that's looking. That's already looking a lot better. You can see, especially around here, it's looking, it's looking pretty good. If you want to undo any of the work that you've been doing, you can also hold down the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC, and then you can just try erasing from the mask that way. Um, but let's just go and bring all that back in again. I don't want to lose those little bits. So we'll keep those restored in the, in the mask. Uh, we're almost done at this stage, but if I go in closer here still, just to go and look at these last bits, you can see that it still isn't looking really quite right. And so the final step that we need to apply here is to use the decontaminate layers, sorry, decontaminate colors option, which I can switch on by clicking on this option here. And if I take the slider over to the left, you can see this is starting off with no effect at all. And as I drag the slider over to the right, I can apply a stronger effect. So you can see quite a bit, big difference there when I go at 100. It's actually trying to remove any traces of the background color that was present in the original uh, image to try and get it to more effectively blend with the photograph that's underneath. But I need to try and find a spot a setting somewhere in between those two where it's beginning to work quite well. And how you adjust this will depend on all the work that's gone on beforehand, the work done with the Refine Edge uh, brush. Uh, it will also depend very much on the image that you're trying to blend with. So all that comes into play. And you can see around the top here that it's really looking quite good. I might just select this tool and just paint a little bit more around this area up here to try and see if I can improve the blending up in that region. And I think that's looking a lot better now. And uh, Where else was there? I think around here too I felt that I could maybe just improve things. So we'll see if that can look better. And I think at that stage, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with the way everything's sort of working now around the whole of the perimeter of the hair outline. Um, and then lastly, we need to look at the options down here. Now at the moment, if it's set to output to a new layer with a layer mask, which it could be quite good because I just move this dialog over here. You can see at the moment, here is the original image with the original image layer created using just the quick selection tool. If I was to create a new layer with a layer mask, it's going to create a new layer above with a new layer mask because this will give me the option to be able to compare before and after. And if I want to redo the effect, then I can always go back to this original layer. If I want to just keep things easier, then I could just simply select just um, the new layer. This would actually create a brand new layer. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick with the current default option and click OK to that. And there you can see we have the new layer created with the new layer mask applied. And there is the old layer and, uh, well, same layer with the old layer mask. So if I was to um, toggle the visibility on there and switch that one on, that's the original layer that we started, or started with. And there's the new layer. Or, new, or the copy layer rather, with the new layer mask applied to it. Well, I think you can see from the close-up view that we've got there that it's looking pretty good. And if I zoom out, everything else is looking rather nice there as well. Um, overall, I think it's a, a good combination, working with the quick selection and working with a refined edge and refined mask to produce the result that we see here. So much so, I think that I can actually now safely delete that old layer and get rid of it and stick with, these, uh, with this new layer and new layer mask. Um, if you want to go and follow the instructions, then check out chapter 9 in the book. And don't forget that also the demo images that I used here are also available on the DVD. Um, just one point though, just remember that those images are actually uh, smaller than the one I've been working with here. So you might need to modify the settings slightly. But I've tested it out myself at low resolution and you can still get a really good result.